I'm Elena. I'm Patrick. I wore tennis. And this is What's in My Bag. So I picked a Shirelles album. I'm actually touched. Oh, I agree. I'm I wasn't going to choose very this, but then, sentimental choice. but then I realized uh, it's very important that I pick this because Elaine and I heard this like, what, 14 years ago? Uh, we listened to this and uh, we both just had a really like profound um, like listening experience that was like, I don't know, it really shook us to our core. Well, and I asked Pat, I was like, I didn't know anything about music production at the time. And I was like, why do the drums sound so good? And he was like, oh, well, it's ribbon mics recorded to tape. And I was like, what? How do you, why do you know any of this? And then he was like, oh, I used to be an audio engineering major and before I dropped out of that program. And I was like, whoa, These this are things I never life. told her. <clears throat> and uh, they just came up during the discussion mm -hmm. over the song Baby It's You by the Shirelles. Baby, it's you. Yeah, and so I was like, I wish all music sounded like that. And he was like, well, maybe we could try making it. And yeah. That was the birth of tennis. Yeah. So thank you, Shells. Yeah. Minnie Ripperton. Great choice. I'm very excited to have this. We don't have this record. Mm -hmm. I'll take you with me now. Come to my garden makes me sob every time I hear it. And um, while we were writing our new record that's just coming out, Pollen, um, I listened to a ton of mini um, performances. She has these incredibly personal single take vocals that are dry and raw with just one performance. Most people layer the same performance of vocals over and over, like double, triple, whatever, so it sounds really fat and meaty. But it would just be this raw, single, unadorned, Very bold. stunning, <laughs> emotional <laughs> performance that um, I strove to do on a few spots of our record because it's, you're really vulnerable and you have nothing to hide behind and uh, no one can do it like she can. But also great drum, just great drum tones on all of arrangement, her Arrangement, I'm just songwriting everything, yeah. but as a singer, she is uh, an icon. Picked a Millennium <clears throat> album. Baby, it's real. Baby, it's real. This is probably my favorite record in the, like, I don't know, for the last five years I listen to this at least once a month. Uh, it makes me happy, makes me calm. Um, yeah. Makes you uh, dancey, jokey, vibey, yeah. party pad. Yeah, also I feel out. like there's some, like, just the back to drums. Really interesting drum tones, especially for the era. You had like late 60s and they were doing just like really blown out almost. Yeah, drum tones that you don't see for another 20 years on this record. So very so important. So we put that on while we cook. Yes. Specifically, this is a cooking album. This is a crying album. And this is this a is Start for, Your Band Start Your Band album. album. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, okay, next huge gear change here. <laughs> Third Eye Blind. This is probably my favorite album of all time. <laughs> it took me a long time to have the courage to admit that it's not Pet Sounds, it's this album. Uh, Pat I think out. I think I agree. It's actually, I didn't know it was so good until she played him. it a lot, and then now I, I realize him. it's actually really good. We once good. repainted our whole house, and I just put this album on, on repeat for like 27 hours, and he was like, I'm not tired of it. Mm -hmm. I can sing almost everything. I can even sing all the guitar solos and the bass breakdowns. So this album really holds up. Switching Gears, this was uh, a really important album to me in middle school. It got me out of my like pop, I'm not saying that pop punk is bad, but it like uh, transitioned me out of like a lot of like pop punk stuff I was listening to. Well, at the time pop punk was so identity based yeah. that to like anything outside of pop punk was to like defect from your whole yeah, social circle. Yeah, it was it was a big moment for me. But mm -hmm. fun story on this one, uh, I was really into recording live shows 
and uh, I was like maybe 13 years old and I can Which already makes no sense. Um, anyways. <laughs> 13 into recording live shows. Convinced my mom to go drop me off at, they were playing the Bluebird in Denver. And uh, she drops me off there at like three o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, no, so this is before cell phones, before anything. But what I love about his mom is that he's like, I need you to drop me off like five my hours was, before the show so I can set up my audio recording equipment. She and she didn't it question important. it at all. She was like, oh, of yeah. course they're gonna let you go and set up all your mics, no permission well, has been granted. Anyways, so they're like loading in and they just let me into the venue without any problems, because, probably because I'm so young and they're just confused. Um, but I start setting up my mics and I'm asking the like front of house guy, I was like, is this okay? And he's like, actually, yeah. And do you want like a board mix too? And so I have this like little blend. It's the best sounding live recording ever. Ever made and by 13 I own it Pat. and I'll bootleg it for anyone. Um, I'm, that should probably pay them royalties. We're saving for that. that for our retirement yes. fund. Pat's 13 year old bootleg yes. live recordings. Yeah. Wait, Think. So how did you get into recording live shows at 13? Uh, my exactly. dad My dad played in bands growing up, like just uh, cover bands and whatnot. And he was just always like a hobbyist of sorts when it came to recording. And, uh, but didn't he buy you a task cam? Yeah, he bought me my first uh, little four track cassette recorder. And that was what I like learned how to do everything on. And that's actually um, what we recorded our first um, singles on as yeah. a band, was the little task and his dad bought them. Yeah, RIP. Yeah, his dad passed away, but. Great, he's, yeah, he's every Big influence, yeah. Okay. Um, Very important. Laura Nero, um, I actually don't have this one. This is Eli and the 13th Confession. I have every other Laura Nero record. He loves the This is a big discovery for me. I'm obsessed with her, but <clears throat> she sings in her head voice in a way that I've never heard before. It's not like thin and wispy. Um, I can't explain it, and it doesn't even emulate, emulate male falsetto. And I started experimenting with singing in my head voice the same way she does and discovered that it's actually a really flattering use of my voice. It was like a very exploratory thing for me, and so I channel her in my, whenever I like, when my voice goes through its natural break, I chant her voice specifically. And um, it's led to a lot of new creative writing for us. But I also feel like we learned about tempo from Laura Nero because mm -hmm. she's like, uh, I don't know, she's probably the most like dynamic tempo uh, artist that I can think of mm -hmm. that's just like... She would play live on piano, accompanying herself, and then the band would play to that. So her tempo would be all yeah, over the map. It could be like 10 map. BPM different all over the place. Signatures. There's a lot of ebb and flow. So um, we've started recording a lot of our songs that way where we built in a lot of, uh, we build in a lot of tempo dynamics. Um, so yeah, thank you, Laura. I grabbed a spiritualized album, very important to me. Also very influenced by girl groups like the Shirelles. I actually think they cover a Shirelle song, but yeah, they re really, really a good take yeah. on. Oh, we don't have this one. Channeling all that early stuff that Elena and I absolutely love. Mm-hmm. The first time we ever made out was to a spiritualized uh. album. That's probably why it's so But not, not this one, but was it Laser Guided Melodies? It's or... probably Laser Guided Melodies, yeah. yeah. Yeah, anyway, really sexy Very album, um, at least for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, don't listen to this, Mom. Um, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Uh, this is probably our most favorite legend. record collectively. Elena and I usually have pretty disparate music tastes, but I feel like this is our like Venn diagram overlap. <laughs> Also, annoyingly, Pat showed me everything. No. Pat, no, it's annoying. You were okay. really annoying. Like, like, what 13 year old was going to Built to Spill shows? Um, I didn't hear about Built to Spill until I was like 22. So, I... anyway, Pat showed me Broadcast. Um, the first song was uh, Tears in the Typing Pool, which is on this record. I told you the truth, and now I sigh too. 
And we were talking and it came on of this playlist and I was like, Shh, everyone shut up. I have to hear this song. And I was like, I haven't been interested or felt anything when I've heard music in a really long time at that point. And it, yeah, anyway. I'm obsessed with Trish, RIP. We were supposed to play a music festival. We were going to play on the same stage. They were going to go on after us at Primavera in Barcelona. But she passed away of the flu just a couple of months before. Actually, while we were on the yeah, tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, it, was like, it was like weeks, no, like weeks, weeks before. before. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was like a really heartbreaking thing. But she left too soon, but she's a huge influence and left a great body of work. Um... Okay, next. This is a just psychedelic folk band that I'm really into. Elena and I, are, there's like a whole mess of like weird folk albums that I feel like we're pretty obsessed with, but this one's one of our favorites. It's pretty aggressive, especially for the era. We didn't get this one, but they have an album that has tons of Latin in it. Which inspired me to sing in Latin on our record um, because I also grew up very Christian and sang in church choirs singing Latin and I wanted to, you know, do a little hat tip, hat tip to my roots. This is a joint one. Yeah, yeah. All she said was that you would find a happiness. What could you see in her eyes? You would have to guess. This, so, yeah. Jim Sullivan, there's so many stories about this guy. Uh, it's, he's like definitely, there's, at this point it's like folklore, but he disappeared in the desert one day. And uh, New Mexico, a lot of people think he got abducted by an alien. But also he has an album called UFO. Did he come? Um, but anyways, The Wrecking Crew was his backing band, um, and they recorded the hell out of this. It sounds so good. Some of the best drum tones I've ever heard. Really great acoustic lines. Mm -hmm. A lot of nuance, even though they're really simple songs. Um, I love it. Yeah, Approved. for just being like a classic rock band, it's just... Deceivingly complicated. Exactly, yeah. There's like so much happening for yeah. how little is happening. And it's a record we never get tired of. Also, is this one Sunny Jim? You wouldn't think a song called Sunny Jim <laughs> fucking slams. Watch your language. <laughs> rocks your world. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Last but not least, I am a Bjork girl through and through to my core. I don't have this one. I just listened to her whole podcast called Sonic Symbolism. I don't know if you've checked it out, but it's incredible. Ooh. She breaks down all of her records. What was amazing for me was to get the laptop and realize that I could do it all in my laptop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like now we are forgotten what this feeling is like, but it was like somebody had come with a space shuttle and delivered you all the tools you wanted when you were five year old. Bjork is the first artist I ever heard in college because I got to everything late because um, I homeschooled. Happy to admit that's why I knew nothing. Um, I heard Bjork, I think a song from Homogenic, and I was like, I didn't know music could sound like that. And I actually cried because I thought I suddenly had a dream to make music and I was like, I don't know how I could never make anything that's so compelling and complicated. And it is a really profound scent feeling for myself like 15 years later to actually make records that don't hold a candle to Bjork, uh, but it's amazing that I felt, I feel like I unlocked a mystery that Bjork first pointed me to. So thank you, queen of all earth, Bjork. Oh, oh that's our meter. We got to feed the time. meter. <laughs> thank you so much for talking with us today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks for having you. This was so fun. Yeah.